I'm so nervous. Hi! Hi! Haley, do you want to be in my little intro? Because I'm nervous. I don't want to be by myself. Okay. Hi, guys. Well, welcome back to Bookmas. We are here at Barnes today. We are going to be filming a fun video. But we're going to be asking... Well, I'm going to be... Well, I don't know who's asking because I'm nervous. <laughs> but we're going to ask some girlies in there what their favorite book is. We're going to get consensus of the popular ones. And then maybe I'll read a few. That's what I want to do. I'm nervous. So I'm not sure like what's going to happen. But that's all. We'll just point at a girl and then I'll shove you towards yeah. her. And then... You can run out. We'll have a plan. We'll figure this out. I'm gonna go get warmed up in there, do a few laps, and then we'll start. All right, let's go to the romance section. I feel safe there. I think I need to scope out who's here and unfortunately have to ambush their book shopping on the Sunday. Are you nervous? I'm literally, I wish you could feel my heart going right now. I'm sweating. There's sweat stains probably everywhere. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna throw up. Also, this is random, but I'm yes. filming a book video. Can I ask you your favorite book for the video? Favorite book? Yeah. I read a bunch of genres, so I okay. do love Ali Hazelwood. And then I'm a big literary fiction fan, okay. so I love Maggie O'Farrell. Like, I love Hammett. Like, I love The Marriage Portrait. I love Sally Rooney. Okay, guys. How has the experience been thus far? I'm sweating over it still. So I went up to a first group of people. I asked them if they, I could ask them a question for a video, but they didn't seem like they wanted to be on video. But they did give me their favorite books, which I only remember two of them and there were three people. The other one I forgot because I blacked out asking them. I got really scared. And then I asked one of the workers when we were checking out and she gave me a book. She gave me another author. I don't remember. I black out every time. So I have to look and see what books she said or the author she said. And then I just I just saw Bestie Michaela. She's in our book club. This is so cool that she was here. And she said she's going to give me her favorite book. She's going to think about it and send it to me. She wasn't a stranger, but I'm nervous. I literally am nervous. I'm just a little girl. What are you gauging from the amount of different responses? Like nobody's repeated the book. Yeah, no one has. I feel like it's interesting to see people's favorites. I have to ask more people and then we'll see, but I'm still sweating over it. So maybe the more I do it, then it'll be easier to ask people. <laughs> Should I do it? Okay, I'm gonna give myself some words of encouragement. Okay, here I go. You ready? Can I ask you like a quick question for a video? Yeah, sure. I'm asking people their favorite books. Do you have a favorite book? Oh my god. Favorite author? Okay, I just finished the second fourth thing. Oh, I haven't read that yet. I highly recommend it. Okay. That. I'm obsessed. And then Akatar. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Hi. You say hi? Okay, I just need to know your favorite book. Probably the one about the, um, <laughs> well actually I love A Man Called Ove. Okay. It's between that and then the one he's like <laughs> magical with the magical children. Oh, Cerulean C. Yes. Oh, I have oh that gosh. book. I haven't yes. read that. Oh, that's oh, it's perfect. So good. Thank you so much. Okay. So nice meeting you. You too. I don't know if I have one. Um, I haven't read in a while. But mm -hmm. I like I don't know. I like the hockey romances. Okay, guys, ignore these clips in my hair. I know it looks like I have horns, but I I don't know. I just have them in my hair. So we're gonna, they're distracting. I have to take them out. Okay, we're gonna debrief people we talk to, kind of take a little survey of what they read. So at the first Barnes, I asked a few people that were book shopping and they also asked a, a worker. And then at the second Barnes, we asked a worker. Actually, Haley asked because I got nervous. The consensus at the first Barnes and Noble that we went to, I asked a group of three people and I forgot the one person's book title because I was just so nervous. It was the first time going up to someone and asking. But one of them said Six of Crows. They really enjoyed and I love Six of Crows. And then the other one said cat at the end of the road or cat at the end of the world i don't know which one and i can't find the book so then we asked a worker while i was checking out and the first thing she said was ali hazelwood she actually just went to her book signing which was really cool and i love ali hazelwood so that was really fun to hear and then she also said she's a literary fiction girly so she likes hamnet and marriage portrait by maggie o'farrell which i actually saw hamnet while i was there and i think it's like a story about shakespeare's son something like that and then she also said she likes sally rooney so that's like normal people conversations with friends which i actually read normal people a few years ago and i enjoyed it. I do like the show better than the book. So then I saw a bestie that's in our book club on the Patreon in the Discord. Met her a few times before, so shout out Michaela. And she came to say hi. That's why I asked her for the video. I don't have a clip of her, but she ended up messaging me and she said the house in the Cerulean Sea and also the similars. And then I asked a girl that was just sitting on her computer working and she said Iron Flame she just read and she really enjoyed. And another one she said was Akatar. So I don't have Iron Flame and I don't think I'm going to read it. I know a lot about what already happened. And then Akatar obviously is a popular one. And then we were walking out and we saw this woman who actually 
watches our videos. So it was so sweet to meet her. She said her favorite books are A Man Called Ove, Ove. And I think that's actually a movie now with Tom Hanks, which is really interesting. And I want to read that. I know it's sadder book, but then she also gave the same answer as someone else and said The House in the Cerulean Sea. So her and Michaela had the same answer. So then we went to another Barnes and we asked the worker there and she said that she loves hockey romances, which I also love hockey romances. If I'm reading any type of sports romance, it's going to be hockey. I don't know why I just eat it up. And I think it's just so interesting how all these people, all of us are reading, but we all like different things like literary fiction or Ali Hazelwood books or just like Iron Flame and like things you see like on BookTok and TikTok. And it's just so interesting. So with the consensus of all of the people we asked the first time around, I feel like I have to read The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This has been on my TBR for a little bit. I think I got it earlier this year and I got the one with the pretty little sprayed edges, but I think we have to read this one because two people out of everyone said they loved it. It's just so interesting. It's kind of like a little survey, a little case study and what people like, what book shoppers like. So the first book we are going to be reading is House in the Cerulean Sea. We are going to start this and I will give some updates and we will see how it goes. It is now the next day. I started this yesterday and I got a about almost halfway of the book. Also, I keep looking at the sprayed edges. I think they're so cute. When I bought it, it had this and it was the only one they had. And I think it's the cutest thing ever. But the story is also very cute. So I never explained what this was about. It's basically about this man, Linus, and he lives a very quiet life. He lives by himself. He goes spin at the same job for like 17 years or something. And he works for a department in charge of magical youth. He visits different orphanages with kids that live there that have magical powers. So he's kind of summoned by the upper management to go to a house like kind of far away. He's like travel there, but it's like a case for study and it's like highly dangerous or something. That's basically his job just to make sure things are going right. But the job that the upper management, extremely upper management wants him to go on is more dangerous because the kids there, their powers are kind of said to be a little bit more dangerous. I'm at the part where he's been there for a little bit. He's writing his case study while he's been there. He's met all the kids. I think there's like around seven of them and then there's the master guy. And it's honestly really sweet meeting these kids because they all have powers that people from the outside think are dangerous and are scared of them, but they're just kids and they just have these powers. Like it's not their like fault almost. And it's really cute the way these kids like interact and have their different powers like one of them is like a little sprite a little land sprite she has wings one of them is this like goblin looking thing and i don't know they all have a story they all have different magical powers and it's really cute and really sweet because they're just kids running around and their master you see how he they call him the master but he just kind of like runs the household and watches over them and you see how he kind of like teaches them things and teaches them how they're just they're all the same like they're all just kids and saying basically like just the sweetest things and like teaching them i don't know it's just really cute the things they're saying and linus right now is kind of still apprehensive over the whole thing because he was told it was gonna be a little dangerous and he's kind of like holding back from really enjoying his experience there and like trying to enjoy it so that's where i'm at right now i'm really enjoying it it's more of like a cozy fantasy but it also has some kind of like humor in it it also has like it feels like magical realism so it's all like just like human mortal people but you also have just like the magical kids and stuff and it's just i love where like the storyline is going and just like the little meanings behind things and the little lessons that's going on in the book i think it's really 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 sweet so that was a lot of talking for what I'm at but I'm almost halfway I want to finish this book quickly because I'm really excited about the next one that we're gonna be reading because I went to another bookstore today and I asked more people their favorite books and I have an exciting one that we're gonna read after this but I'm gonna finish this first and we'll see how it goes I'm very excited to see where it ends because I want to see Linus's journey here because he just started off very like to himself quiet and doesn't talk to anyone and now he's surrounded by so many people and so many kids so I'll see you maybe when I finish I don't know I'll see you in a little
just finished House in the Cerulean Sea. I think I'm gonna give this, I actually didn't think about writing because I just finished it, but I think I'm gonna give this, uh, I'm between, this is very specific, I'm between a 3.75 and a 4. So one of the two. I'll probably put four on Goodreads and just stick with that. But it was really, really cute. I will say the first like 100-ish pages was a little harder to get into because it just feels like a cozy fantasy and not much is going on. You're just learning the world and meeting these characters and seeing like what his job is. And it's not too exciting to read. But once you get to know the characters and you can kind of connect to them and their stories and what this story is trying to tell, it was so cute. And I say cute because the kids in the story with their magical powers and the way they were acting acting with the, our main character Linus was just it was really really cute like they were just children but they just happened to have these magical powers and it was it was cute that's really the only adjective I have for that but I like the story I liked the message that it sent and I like I don't know I just really I enjoyed it there's more of like messages behind what's going on but again I don't like kids in books I say this all the time like this form of having children I don't know if it was the magic that they had or the way that they acted with the main character in his point of view I don't know everything they were doing was just so sweet to me like one example this isn't a spoiler but it's just like one of the kids in here he looks like kind of like a monster and like as he was growing up everyone was like kind of scared of him because he was supposed to be a monster whatever he had that like connotation with him he looks like that but he wants to be a bellhop really bad <laughs> he asks Linus our main character if he could fold his laundry if he could carry his suitcase and he just like has this dream of being a bellhop and it's just what like that is that not just the cutest thing ever like he just wants to be a bellhop that's it I loved him but all of the kids were just so cute and all their little different things to them they all had different little powers and their interactions and the way that they were with like their master of the house was really cute and the way he taught them things and basically telling them it's not what's on the outside of what you are but on the inside it was sweet it's a sweet book, so I'm um, between those two readings. That was our first book reading from asking people what books they read. So now I went to another bookstore, so I'll put in some clips of me asking people from there and we'll read a book from our consensus of books from that bookstore. On to those clips. <laughs> Hello guys. I'm like whispering because people are walking past. We are in Brooklyn. We're at the Rip Bodice. We're gonna go inside. We're gonna find some books and hopefully I can ask either people that are book shopping or workers what their favorite books are. I'm nervous but I feel like this is safe. I don't know why something about this place feels safe. We haven't gone inside yet so let's go. I'm gonna throw up everywhere. Can I ask you a question for a video of filming? What's your favorite book? Um, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Probably. No, I know it's a hard question. Like two seconds. Yeah, Maybe you like can give me options if you have like multiple okay. favorites. I really like who I love Little Women. It's one of my favorites. Okay. You know, Anna Green Gables. Mm -hmm. Love those too. I love David Copperfield. Contemporary wise, Less by Andrew Sean Greer. That's really good. Oh, probably Lori Moore's Self Help. That's my favorite. Okay. Book, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good day. I'm gonna ask her for it. I could do this. I can't actually. Excuse me. Can I ask you a question for a video? Can I ask you your favorite book? I love the Blue Glass series. <gasps> oh my god. I have a candle. I give my friend the Rome candle. Oh, <laughs> I have to read the last book. Oh really? Mm -hmm. I, I just finished the tandem. I read the prequel first, so I'm rereading the whole series. <gasps> it's probably so fun going back. So good. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Success! I did it. Can I also ask you guys your favorite books? My favorite book is probably People We Meet on Vacation. <gasps> oh, Emily Henry. By Emily Henry. It's my most favorite book that I just read is American Queen. The First Lady, the President, and the oh, Vice wow. President. Oh, wow. That's fun. I don't know. That one's hard because mm -hmm. they always changes. But I think right now, I love books that make me cry. Okay. <laughs> I just recently read The Good Part by Sophie Cousin. Wishes to get to the good part of her life, so she wakes up 16 years later and like has like a husband that she doesn't recognize. She has to like reckon with all of her choices that she didn't know she made. That sounds good. Yeah. I need to look that one up. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Hello guys. I am in the same outfit I was when I was talking about our consensus from the last time we were book shopping. I am filming that in the same day because at this point I've read both books. I'm just filming these parts after filming this video. So I already know my feelings on everything. <laughs> But you guys don't. Well, you know my feelings on House in the Cerulean Sea, but not on the next book we will be reading this video, which is something I have been anticipating and waiting to put in a reading vlog for a while, and I'm so excited for you guys to see me read it. But first, the books that we got from this bookstore. The first girl I went up to, she is a classics girly. She's a literary fiction girly, and she gave me a few books. She said Little Women and Anne of the Green Gables. She gave David Copperfield, which are classics, and then she also gave a few literary fiction, which she gave Less by Andrew Sean Greer and Self Help by Laurie Moore, which I looked all these up, and I don't think that's my 
my taste, but I feel like she has such a taste. Like she likes classic literary fiction. She's one of those girlies. So that was really interesting. And then I went up to her friend that she was walking around with. And the first thing she said to me was she was rereading Throne of Glass. So I couldn't put a lot of our conversation in this video because Taylor Swift was playing in the background, but she's saying that she's rereading Throne of Glass because she finished all of Sarah J Mass's world this year. She finished Crescent City. So for Crescent City to come out next year, she's rereading Throne of Glass. She's like getting in the Sarah J Mass world. And I was like, that's actually like perfect timing because I actually just finished the tandem read a few days ago. Seeing another girly reading Throne of Glass at the same time is so fun. And then I asked the two workers, first one said people will meet on vacation. So shout out Emily Henry. We love Emily Henry. And she also said American Queen, which was a story about, I think it was the president, but something about the political world and it's a romance. And then the other worker said a literary fiction book called The Good Part by Sophie Cousins. So I know you guys maybe want me to read a classic. I know I've been asked a few times to read a classic or do a video reading classics. And one day I would love to, I seriously would love to just read Little Women. Like I seriously, I would love to one day. For the sake of this video and just the fate that I asked a girl what her favorite book was and she was rereading Throne of Glass and that I got a Dorian candle and she gave her friend a Rowan candle. Like there's just so many things that kind of added up there. We're reading Kingdom of Ash. I mean, I already read it, so don't look at my tabs and stuff, but we're gonna read this together. I'm gonna give my thoughts, my feelings. You're gonna see reactions. It's all spoiler free, so if you haven't read the series, don't worry about it. But at the very end of this video, we're gonna do a little section of me talking about Throne of Glass in a spoiler section. So if you have read all of it and wanna hear some of my opinions, you can wait until the end of the video. I'm very excited to give you guys my reactions, my reviews of me reading this book because I've dedicated so much time to the series and I can't believe it's about to be over. It is over for me in this time right now, but for you guys and me, after this clip, it's not over yet so we're about to go on a journey together let's read this book and i'm excited for you guys to see me read this book okay let's get into reading kingdom of ash since I have updated or even talked about the book that I'm currently reading, obviously, which is Kingdom of Ash. I started it days ago at this point. I think it's been a few days because I started it when Haley and Destiny were here and they've been gone for a few days. So gotten a good amount through and I wanted to now talk about it because this is the last book in the long series. So there's not much I can say that's not spoiler because there's so much that goes on in this series that like anything I say could give like even the smallest thing away. But I just wanted to give my like feelings towards it, I guess, towards the book, just like very, very vague. And then, like I said, obviously at the end of all of this we'll do a little spoiler sections so we could talk about the whole series i'm so excited about but so far so good i think the beginning not that it was slow but the way the book or the two books because the tandem was before this the way that ended there's a lot to kind of rehash and try to get through in the beginning of this it's very painful and this whole series for me has been more painful than not like there's definitely more sad scenes than happy scenes but i think that's what makes like the happier scenes that much better because you don't get too many of them and i know that doesn't sound like a good thing like oh my god there's so many sad moments in this book but it just you grow to connect with the characters and love the characters and just like you're with them for so many books that once you get into this one it's like okay one there's so many characters like when I tell you so many characters that you have to keep track of like there are so many but by this book like I'm invested in all of them and I have like thoughts and feelings and opinions with all of them so getting into this book I just I'm really nervous and I'm really like on on my toes. Is that the saying? Like I'm on the edge of my seat? I don't know. All that mixed together about how this is going to end and conclude because it's been a wild ride through all of the other books that I'm just like nervous with how this is going to end because in my perfect world, I have a scene and I have the way I would love this to end, but it's just like I'm nervous of how it's gonna happen. Into the actual book, I did start tabbing it. I put my tabs on the front. I kind of tried to match it to the cover and I found this perfect blue that matches with the coloring of the words and then this red color. And I actually never do this when I'm tabbing. Usually I just tab normally with just like one color, whatever I'm doing. But this one, I actually have like kind of like a theme or like things for each tab going. So the red one is more of like the romance and then the blue is more of like plot lines. And you can see me tabbing. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a lot more blue than the red ones. I'm almost out of the blue. So I'm gonna have to find a different shade or a different blue once these are out. But 
but like I said, as you can tell, there's a lot more blue in this one because in this series, romance plots are not like the forefront of the books. The plot lines and like character development and the scenes and like the world building, everything involved in this story and in this series is so much bigger than the romance. Like yes, there's romance, there's different characters that you get their romantic connections and everything, which I love so much. So I do have some of those tabs because I'm invested in them as well, but the plots and just all of that are so much bigger in this series than romance at all, which I personally in this series, I think I've never said this before, but I prefer the storyline and the characters and the things that are going on. I don't know the correct word right now. I'm forgetting it, but I like that over the romance that's going on. Don't get me wrong. Love the romance scenes and what we get with that, but I just think this is such an... What's the word? What's that word? Oh, I'm trying to think of the word. It's like a very... <laughs> Oh, what's that word? Oh my god, I'm so annoyed. It's like on the tip of my tongue. The world is very intricate. I thought of it. It's so intricately done. Like there is so much from the very first prequel of the book that just like all adds up into this book and I just like the brain of Sarah J Mass is incredible to me. So anyway, the story so far, it's good. I yeah there were some scenes that were supposed to be i feel like on happier side like i had like happy tears but then from what's been happening it's like such a sad moment too because like things have gone so different i'm enjoying the storyline of where it's going right now i'm just like anticipating something happening and i'm waiting for that and i've been waiting for that for a while now so not just this book like the series i feel like up until this point so hoping that happens before we get closer to the end and we get some i feel like time with what i'm thinking of i don't know I, none of it makes sense but this book is thick so i feel like lots is gonna happen lots is about to go down and I feel like it'll be painful because that's the theme of the series. I'll come back with updates. I'm just going to read and we'll see how it goes. update before I go and finish this book. I didn't have too much to say because again, last book in the series, I've said it so many times, there's not much I can say without spoiling, but I have gone through every emotion I think that I could emote possible while reading this book. And I tried to get my reactions on camera, but I never know when to like start the camera. So I guess from here on out, I'll try to record majority of me finishing this because I feel like most of my reactions, my like physical reactions will probably be, I'll probably have the most physical reactions with the end of this book because we all know the end of Sarah J Mass books are always crazy, but I just know this one will do it. So I think I'll try to do that so that you can at least see my reactions to it, but I've been going chab crazy. And like I said, the romance in here, what we've been getting with the romance in here, I've been absolutely eating up. I just read a part, which is in chapter, the end of chapter 81. I just read, I actually just finished 82. So the end of chapter 81, I... <laughs> I literally like hand to the mouth, gas, tears. I also downloaded it on my Kindle as well because I didn't want to hold this big book the whole time and I like that it shows me how long I have left in the chapters in the book, how far I am with the percentage in the book as well. So I actually have them both open and as I'm reading in the book, if I choose to read the book, I'll scroll through the Kindle. I'm like doing both. I'm almost tandeming the book. I'm reading both at the same time. So this just makes it easier, but I don't know. If I see that there's like three minutes in the chapter, I'll go on here. But if there's like 15 minutes in the chapter, I'll go on my Kindle. You guys didn't ask how I'm reading it but that's what I'm doing anyway I was reading on my kindle the end of that chapter and I was like oh my god and I had to go into the book I had to annotate I had to tab I had to do the whole thing because I'm like gasping crying and it's just like so many emotions I'm also sitting here trying to finish this book my goal this whole day was to finish this I had some other work to do but I've read a good chunk today and I think I'll probably end up finishing it tomorrow morning if I don't binge it tonight which I want to but I don't know because I have about a little over 200 pages left which is kind of a lot when it comes to these books I read them a little bit slower but I'm also watching it's Taylor Swift's last show of this year on live because everyone thinks that Rep TV is going to be announced. So the anxiousness I'm getting of finishing this book while also the anxiousness I'm getting of trying to see if Rep TV is coming out simultaneously is a lot, you know? I'm, I'm very anxiously just sitting here. I'm going to go read a bunch more. There's some that I'm like anticipating happening, which I have been almost the whole book, but so much has happened and so much has like intertwined and just, I don't know, absolutely eating it up. Like, 
that's all i'm eating it up i cannot wait to see like what happens from here on out like there's a lot that needs to go down and i feel like a lot of questions need to be answered and a lot needs to happen because there's so many characters so many storylines so i'm just like so intrigued and just completely anticipating what's gonna happen what just happened what i just read was just so good and i'm so excited to finish this now so i'm gonna go finish it i can't believe i'm saying that seriously cannot believe i'm saying that i've dedicated so much time to this series and the way that i'm finishing this or the fact that i'm finishing this is just so crazy to me like i don't know what i'm gonna do after like my life has revolved around throwing up glass for a really long time so anyway i'm gonna go finish i will come back when we're done and we will talk about this book and a little section of all of throwing up glass which is gonna be really fun so i will see you when i'm done this to happen. Oh my god. This is getting like really crazy right now. No way. It's been such a long journey. I just like, everything, I feel like I'm a character in this book. Everything that we have been through to get here is absolutely insane. Oh my God. I feel like I'm going through it right now. Okay, I have two chapters left. I'm gonna go finish and then I think there's an epilogue so yeah I'm gonna go finish and then I'll be back when I'm done I actually am so unwell right now like okay we can talk about it after happy or not I, they're good <laughs> i don't know if they're happy or sad tears i think it's a mix of both <laughs> okay guys i have collected myself i'm okay now am i though no i feel empty i feel like all my friends are gone and i just feel 
sad not at what happened in the book i mean yeah sad over some things that happened in the book but more that it's over i feel like i've dedicated so much time to the series and i've connected to these characters so early on in the book i am tearing up that is that delusional it might be a little delusional i've connected so hard to these characters from so early on knowing what they've gone through through all of this knowing what happened through this book this book could have been like barely a plot and i wouldn't have even cared i was so connected to the characters that i was so invested of what was going to happen and how it was going to end off for everyone and there's so many characters throughout this whole series like so many that you just become so connected to so many different people and characters that seeing their journey from when you first meet them you don't even realize how big of an impact they're gonna have until you finish this book so i went tab crazy because i was just so again invested and i think i'm gonna land on a five star for this yeah there were some things that i wish i had more to obviously not gonna say anything but i don't care i'm giving it five stars i'm again i just feel empty now that i'm done like I, i've dedicated so much time and now i'm just so sad what am I supposed to do now? So this book was a whirlwind. I think Sarah J Mass's brain and the way that she could create these characters and worlds and storylines and how everything just weaves from the first book you read in the series, whether it's Assassin's Blade or Throne of Glass, like everything connects. And I've never read a series that's been like that. Like it's just so encapsulating when you finish this. I think I need to do a reread. So that is why I'm so glad that whoever it was that I talked to in The Ripped Bodice saying that her favorite series is Throne of Glass and she's rereading it. I am so glad she said that because I needed that to finish the series and read this and she has kind of like sparked this in me now that I need to go back and reread this and just see all the connections from again the first book of it and just see how it all adds up like when you're reading the book things are just like from the beginning thrown in again and brought up again and it's just so crazy knowing these characters from where they started to where they ended up in this blows my mind all of the women characters in this book are just like phenomenal in my mind she makes such strong female characters and I love it like so much there's painful parts there's sad parts there's happy parts bittersweet like that's how I feel right now it's so bittersweet finishing this but anyway I'm done with that. I just want to say thank you to everyone that told me their favorite books in this video or favorite authors or whatever it was. Even if you're not watching this, thank you guys. I know most of you probably won't see this ever, but I wanted to thank you guys for giving me your favorite authors and favorite books because I have them written down and I do want to read them at some point. I just think it's so interesting how we could all just like love books, be in the book community, it's such a huge community, but all love different types of books and different authors and read at different paces and all these different things. Like everyone is so different, but we all at the end of the day just love reading and I think it's just so cool. So I love this concept. I think it did help my social anxiety a little bit like I don't know it was definitely hard to do because <laughs> going up to strangers and I don't know kind of invading their space asking their favorite books even though we're in a bookstore everyone loves books it's I don't know it was it was difficult for me but I'm happy that I did it and I'm happy I got these answers and then it led me to here and also obviously the house on the cerulean sea just I don't know it was really fun I hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you did I'm gonna do a little bit of a throne of glass spoiler section after I end off this video just really quickly just to go through how I feel about all the books because I didn't make a dedicated video so do not stay and listen to that if you have not read Throne of Glass at all because there's gonna be some major spoilers happening and I really don't want anyone to hear that. So if you are watching this and you have not read Throne of Glass, please, please, please do not continue watching. So if you haven't read it and this is the end of the video for you, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I had so much fun filming this video, taking you guys along with me and thank you to Destiny and Haley for being there with me while asking everyone these questions. And I will see you hopefully tomorrow for the next day in Bookmas. Goodbye. Okay, Throne of Glass spoiler section, please. If you have not read this series, do not listen to me right now please because I'm about to go spoiler heavy so I read Assassin's Blade first I still stand by saying reading it first is the way to go because everything that happens in that book I think impacted me reading the rest of the trilogy or the trilogy the rest of the series because going into Throne of Glass knowing what she's been through and knowing all the pain she's has and where she's come from and how she got to where she is in the start of Throne of Glass I was connected to her right off the bat and I feel like if I didn't read Assassin's Blade first I wouldn't have been as connected to her so I really liked that I did that first and I'm happy that I did but I understand people reading it the different with the other way I just I enjoyed reading it first and it's so crazy I knew reading Assassin's Blade like it wasn't for nothing like like the whole time I was waiting for that like life debt that they had with the Red Desert like she saved Ansel's life like and I remembered that I was like this is not for nothing I knew all of it was gonna come back I knew Irene in the beginning I was waiting for her to come back and all of the things that happened in Assassin's Blade come back eventually throughout the series and it's so crazy to see because I remember starting Tower of Dawn and seeing Irene's name seeing she was a healer and I was like wait is this the same girl from the first book and obviously it was and it was just so cool that she was able to do that and give them such a backstory so i loved assassin's blade for that reason obviously reading it first you don't know that's gonna have such an impact but it truly truly does going back and i can't wait to reread everything but then into throne of glass i don't really remember too much of throne of glass i know we met dorian and and kale and everyone but i don't really remember too much 
to be honest. I know it was like the championship fighting, which I did enjoy that, like the action packedness of it. And the other one is Nox, who she like kind of befriended in that championship thing, comes back in the last book, which is just so crazy. Like that is completely full circle. Yeah, I enjoyed Throne of Glass. I enjoyed meeting those characters because that's where you kind of like see everyone and see what she needs to do and like her thinking of Sam kind of the whole time and what she like she needs to win this and also meeting Dorian, Kale, the king and like starting the connection to them. And then going into was it Crown of Midnight? That is one of my favorite books. I think it's like top three favorite of the whole series. I think that's when you find out so much of the magic and about the characters that goes in through the whole entire series. So you have the word keys, Nehemia, the magic that she finds out is real. Like the first two, three, two books that you read, no magic is involved until you get there. And I didn't know in the beginning reading it like what the magic system was. I knew nothing really about the trilogy. Why do I keep calling it a trilogy? Nothing about the series. So I really wanted to keep that. And I don't know how I didn't get anything spoiled for me. Except when I started Assassin's Blade, I went on to Goodreads to say I was reading it, currently reading. And the first review I saw talked about Sam's death. So I was like, you know, Crown of Midnight was one of my favorites. I did get the very end spoiled when you find out who Aelin is. And it was kind of in the back of my mind that that's what it was because they would bring up Aelin's name. And I was like, okay, that has to be like a bigger thing. But I saw like a fan art somewhere and it said Aelin and something else. And I was like, oh, literally 30 pages before finishing Crown of Midnight. And you also meet Elena in that one. Is that her name? I forgot. And Brandon. I don't know. You meet like the gods and like all of that, the word keys in Crown of Midnight. Like it's just like the, the staple and like the beginning of like everything to come. And then going into Air of Fire, I was kind of slowly getting into it. That's not my favorite of the series because I personally loved the castle and the prince and all of that setting. I grew to love Dorian and I'm a Dorian stan. Dorian is my favorite. I think it's because going from Sam and like what happened into the castle and having like a relationship starting with Dorian, I just like connected to him and her so much because I was like, oh, this is like the first person after Sam. And then after that was over, I like hurt me because I was like, oh, oh, this isn't like the real love interest. And then it's to Kale. And Kale was just so like whiny to me for a little bit and I didn't love him. And I was like, you can't just give me all these love interests and then have me root for another one. So I just didn't like Kale really. And then going into Era Fire, I kind of just missed the setting and the characters that I grew to connect to. So it was hard for me to get into Era Fire. But as soon as Roan came in angry and the whole enemies thing going on, I knew he was her mate. Like I just knew in my head that's what it was. But Era Fire, you meet the rest of what's going to happen in the rest of the series. Like, you have Rowan and the Cadre and Maeve and you have Manon and you meet the witches and all of that and more of like the dark power that's happening and I was so bored throughout the whole thing because it's just like you have to learn so much it's very like information heavy so it wasn't my favorite but like I think after finishing the whole series I now going back into it would appreciate it a lot more no after air fire was queen of shadows and that's one of my favorites I forgot about that one so much happens in queen of shadows I was again I'm a dory stan so like having him in so much pain in the beginning and then also getting the call around him Sorsha her head like the whole thing that happened there I felt deeply like I felt that physically because he was one of my favorite characters characters and I think his development from the beginning not really knowing his stance and just being a prince up until the very end was crazy like he had such development I think all of them did but like his was crazy because I just I love Dorian and then they kill the king they found out that the Valg was kind of in the king and he wasn't really himself or whatever and then her and Dory I call him Dory her and Dory put their hands together the castle breaks the king is dead all of that and then they try to go to Terrazin which starts in the tandem they find themselves there and is like you're not really the queen so the tandem was hard for me i didn't really care for kale but i did feel for him at the end of the queen of shadows book because obviously he is paralyzed but i liked his development and i do appreciate that he got a whole book because i think he was kind of like underappreciated especially from me but him and irene's story was is one of my favorites i did enjoy that i do think that nezrin i wasn't connected to through the whole beginning of the series after we met her and i just didn't care for her chapters i do appreciate that it gave more into where she was where she was from and the spiders and all of that but I think it was like too much of her and her chapters were really long but Irene and Kale's story I loved so much because I feel like throughout the whole thing they had such a journey together not only just healing Kale but also together and also finding out that she can save the people that are stuck in the Valgs or whatever so yeah those took me a while to finish I honestly don't remember too much of what happened in Empire Storms other than the ending of it which the ending really got me and I was just like there was a lot I do want to say that Lorcan and Alid is that how you say Alid? Alid their story was another one that when you're introduced it's a lot of just like you don't really know them so reading it was I was kind of bored but knowing where she came from and like learning about her I was like there has to be more to her and the whole like Morath Morath I don't know how to say these names but the whole thing there with Caltaine and Manon and Alid and all of their stories together I just think it was so crazy so her and Manon I think their little relationship the hope happening after she told Alid to like run away with the word key I loved that and then seeing her and Lorcan just like I didn't think it was gonna be a thing I thought there was gonna be like platonically companions trying to get to Aelin and everyone I love them. I think they're like one of my top, top, top couples. I'm obsessed with them, like obsessed. But yeah, the ending of Queen, no, Empire Storms was really sad, really crazy. And I also don't really remember too much of having the tandem because it took me so long to read. I actually kind of blacked it out a little bit. But then going into 
Kingdom of Ash, I was kind of iffy because I always feel like in fantasies, a lot of the time, everyone's kind of split up and they have to find their way back to each other. So I was hoping like so hard that this whole book wasn't them all not together because one, the reunions I love so much, but I also wanted time with all these characters together. We love them all so much and connected to all of them. I wanted them all together. So I was so happy that there was a lot of reunions going on here, but they all had their own different missions. And there's just so much that happens in this book. Like, like so much, like the beginning with Fenris and Aelin and their blinks with each other to them seeing Rowan again and her just like being not Aelin anymore. Like she is just so broken down. Her scars that are gone, like that was like crazy. And then you have Manon and Dory and their story, which I wish at the end of this, we got more of them, but they again were another one of my favorites. I loved them like a lot because they were just so different. I feel like it's not when you expected them to be together, but then they weren't. It kind of like low key made sense. But him going into Morath or whatever, seeing Maeve and like playing her was so good. I loved that part. I like forgot everything else that happened in this book because I literally just feel empty from it that I kind of just blacked out reading it and finishing it. I will say the ending of it had me like crying so much because it was just like they've gone through so much and I've we've been through it with them that seeing the coronation seeing Evangeline like I don't know all of it was just like there's like so much to say but that's really all I have to say I don't really know if I had made any sense I think I just kind of explained the stories and like I don't know my top three though are Crown of Midnight, Kingdom of Ash, and Queen of Shadows and then I think my least favorite i don't know i don't know because i feel like after rereading these one day this all could change my rankings of them but yeah what a journey this was i just i feel so empty finishing it and i'm gonna miss them and i feel like i don't know one of the best series ever it's so crazy that this was like all i don't know just written in general like it's just so crazy from where you started to where you get at the end of it it's like insane anyway i probably have so much more to say i want to literally think like i'm thanking the girls that are in our discord but in the throne of glass thread that listen to me talk about this book and like watch me finish this and go through the rest of the series because they really cheered me on because this is a big book and I was losing faith at some point during the tandem so they help so much and they're also queens so if you're not part of our book club we have little buddy threads for other books and I did not shut up in this one because I needed to talk to people during this so also shout out to Destiny for getting me to read this series because it's one of her favorites and she's talked so much about talks so highly about it that I just like knew I needed to read it and she knows what she's talking about it is phenomenal so thank you guys for watching i cannot believe this is finished this series but hope you enjoyed the video anyway and let me know your thoughts about throne of glass try to leave the comments spoiler free but if you have anything you want to chat about you can dm me or somewhere we can talk about it but thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed let me know if you did and i will see you guys tomorrow for the next day in book miss bye